Friday afternoon, folks. Ted Ralston here in our studio at downtown Honolulu, Think Tech Studios, with our show Where the Drone Leads, with a fantastic panel of guests that string halfway through the Hawaiian Islands here. Sitting with me at the table in Honolulu, we have, uh, first of all, our most important guest here. We have Katrina Kuo, uh, eighth grader at uh, uh, New, 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 New Valley Middle, Middle School. School. Okay, and we have her uh, overseer, protector, and principal, uh, Sean Tajima. And we have uh, to uh, Katrina's left, we have Dr. John Rand at UH who runs the uh, outreach and, and the inreach for STEM for the state. STEM education, STEM involvement, and community outreach and such. And standing by on Lanai, we have one of our frequent flyers on the show. There he is, George Purdy. Uh, George Purdy of uh, many different uh, skills and, and world recognition in the world, in the, in the game of STEM and in the game of drones and such. So anyway, welcome on board, folks. We have a lot of people, a lot of opinions, and uh, a long way to go on this show. We talk about drones in general, where they're going, where they're coming, and what problems they have, and what we have to do to make them useful to us in society. But you've got something coming up in in a week. Mm -hmm. It's really cool where a lot of this will start to happen at the at the science level, at the engineering level, and this will be the annual, uh, the, the semi-finals, you might say, for the state of Hawaii's uh, science and engineering competition. It used to be called Science Fair in my days. That was a long time ago. In fact, you know, when I was born, the earth hadn't crusted over yet, <laughs> so we had to wear thick shoes because it was all molten out there, right? But it's since hardened over and paved the streets and all. Anyway, um, this is uh, an incredible issue here, STEM, in Hawaii. John, tell us a little bit about how you and UH and the community colleges can, can kind of wrap your arms around this whole issue of STEM. And how do, you, how do you define it? How do you turn it into a value for the society and, and help it go forward? Yeah, science, technology, engineering, and math is, is a national phenomenon that's going on. I think everybody recognizes the very, very important part that it's going to play in our future. And you can argue that it's, it's here now, but it's going to grow, and it's growing really fast, and it certainly is going to grow here in Hawaii. We're going to, uh, we at the University of Hawaii are committed to uh, really trying to make sure that our state is competitive and that we have um, enough skilled workforce here. And so we've set up uh, the Office of STEM Education um, here at the University of Hawaii, and we are now in the process of trying to get coordinated all of our different campuses and all of the kind of work that we're trying to do in STEM to kind of get a, a better arrangement in terms of, of coordination so we can talk more clearly to our K-12 partners and we can talk to the workforce here in Hawaii and let them know that we have students that are going to come out that are extremely well trained to take the jobs of the future. I know we have STEM. to design a program at UH that attracts people like Katrina so she doesn't end up going to California to go to college, right? Want her to go to UH. And and can, can continue developing the breed here. Yeah, the brain drain problem exactly. is, is always right. significant in Hawaii. We oftentimes lose our best and brightest, but I think there's been a lot of really wonderful opportunities recently that have begun to slow that down, and, and we want to continue to keep that, that, that happening. And of course, if you can go to the mainland and you're very successful, go, but come back. Come back after you've made your mark there. And so the job of all of us is to figure out the architecture and the plans and the programs that will go forward and produce something that people can come back to. I know I went away in 1963 and just came back five years ago. So right. That's that's what we do. So, uh, Sean, in the uh, in the in the curriculum you develop at school and such, how do you take take advantage of or or get get frightened by this evolving? undefined domain uh, of STEM. So we're pursuing a lot of advancements in STEM ourselves. Okay. Um, we have an excellent science program at New Valley. Uh, we have an after-school robotics team that does very well. And we have students like Katrina who are uh, do really great projects and are very successful. Uh, Katrina is the winner of our school science fair. She created a project on her own with an electronic device to measure uh, medication for, for patients and alerts them and also measure the correct dose and she'll be going on to the district science fair which is coming up next week Saturday at Kapilani Community College. Okay and people the public can come to that to yes. observe the yes. judging and interact with the kids and see the projects and things going on? Yes. I've actually been a judge at the state competition down at the convention center and I tell you it it's a it's a 
stressful day because there's a lot of stuff on display and it's so well done, it's hard to actually take it in and, and judge one versus the other. You want to give them all the blue ribbon, you know? Anyway, and then we have George Purdy on Lanai. George, uh, you were involved heavily in the STEM program and Pulama and other cultural and, and technical events on the island. Uh, how do we hook you? At, how do we take his ideas, what he's developed, which are pretty incredible, and bring them over to Oahu? And how do we take what Oahu's doing and get it over to George? Well, I think it's a great missing link because a lot of the questions coming out of my community is where does it fall within our uh, university system, within, which, which is UH. So I'm glad to finally meet Dr. Rad, Rand that uh, this is the connection that we've been missing. So a lot of parents here, I believe now with a, uh, I'll start from K through university level that it'll help them push their child and also give us more support in what we want to do. And then just listening to um, Katrina's story, I mean, this is what, especially the legislation like we've done this past week, Ted, was, you know, those bills were going to kill a lot of these future jobs and kill the dream of that child right there. And that's what I want to avoid. You know, a lot of the education within the STEM, we need some policy making so that our young folks can actually voice their opinion and help create these new bills to pave that pathway so that our kids can stay home or come back to Hawaii. We don't mind them leaving, but we need to get them to come home. That's what I've been seeing this week, dealing with all the emails that we've been doing. And Katrina, I'm, I give you props that what I'm trying to do here is for my child and every child in the state of Hawaii, and I'm very proud of you. Thank you. I'll do my best every day. Can you imagine a better spokesman for our collective effort here than George? <laughs> and uh, George goes back a long way to the famous Purdy family of 1912 and the National Rodeo Competition in Nebraska or somewhere, which <laughs> the Purdy family won them all. So anyway, George is still uh, carrying that, that, that flame forward. So it, this is, uh, and, and a lot of comes, things come to my mind. I was uh, thinking when you describe what your what your project is okay. Katrina um, it made me think how do we scale what you might call a research question mm -hmm. that we we make available to kids um, I, through the organized STEM programs university and the scholastic level we do have the opportunity to uh, to sort of manage how we put out those problems but I think that might actually harm the situation we ought to put the full load on you it's your future and <laughs> we're just in the way right now so we we probably need to reveal to you the, the big scope of all the things that the future has to think about mm -hmm. and George was just alluding to some of them right here we've been spending all week at the legislature uh, dealing with um, uh, pros bills and such that could if, if incorrectly interpreted um, slow things down and get in our way so one of the issues we have to have you help us face and tackle is these issues of uh, technology incorporation in the future world and uh, so that's a problem we'll leave on your table in fact we'll be speaking at the at, at john's uh, at the final session on at kapilani on two, on saturday we'll be doing a drone demo with some other folks out there i think we'll give you guys a list here's your here's your task list what you have to take care of for the future mm -hmm. that we didn't do so <laughs> so thank you for being so good at what you're doing thank you and uh and and, and uh, make all your friends do the same thing okay. and then we get hooked up we got to hook up with yours we got to get a lanai oahu combination going here maybe you guys sister school something like that and and uh and get george over here and get somebody from your school over to lanai oh, yeah. how about that george how about we do a little exchange oh i'm no problem anytime any let's do it it's easy you know the more kids that our kids get exposed to and vice versa i mean this is a great place to learn and it's wide open it's not congested you know it, it'll be just nice once that is able to happen we have the uh here why not you know our kids go there for uh un junior un and other scholastic leagues this drone thing is it's right up our alley that's an interesting point and it kind of takes us back to the the whole drone issue um, uh, I got into this out of the aerospace industry so I had some knowledge of the pieces that go into it uh, the schools and universities just pick this stuff up and, and running with it and uh, it's um, it's sort of interesting because it cuts across all denominations of the of, uh, of the scholastic system engineering science uh, materials uh, software uh, coding uh, testing all this stuff is all combined here and something that turns 
ideas into reality and into success or failure really quick. Unlike business where it may take a year between the time you start something and the time you get some feedback. So it's a great tool for pulling together all these uh, different ways to look at things and, uh, and manage them. So uh, in terms of the drones themselves, um, there's also a big list of things that they need to be successful in the future. What we have today in drones probably won't survive the next couple of years because there's not enough reliability, not enough uh, uh, standardization, not enough ability to, to really be economically useful uh, in the configurations we have today. We need materials work, we need propulsion work, we need communications work, software work. So that's going to be on the list that you guys are going to get from us on okay. Saturday, okay? Okay. okay. So John, then how do we um, how do we take what what George is thinking about? And you mentioned that you're starting to put together the pieces that connect all the uh, community colleges and the schools. What? How do we how do we do that? How do we yeah, get everybody together? It's a it's a it's a classic tension that takes place <laughs> between the really cool things like a drone. Yeah. No question about it. Everybody wants to, you know, fly them, and and then we want to learn about them. We want to use them as a primary source to learn from. The technology is without question fantastic. It's something that folks are going to want, particularly if you're going to be a STEM major. But you also got to have the fundamental sciences. So we always got to have that tension and balance. We need a clear message to our students if you want to do this kind of stuff, which is great. Um, you've still got to, you got to, you got to take math classes and you've got to take your science classes. You know, there's a minimum science requirement in Hawaii. If you want to be a scientist or a science major or an engineer or, or someone working with technology, you got to go and take an extra science course, you know, and that course might be something that is related to this. You know, we took off in robotics more than a decade ago. The state made a conscious decision to push robotics. And since that time, I mean, it's worked. We now at the university are starting to see our students who came in from the VEX programs and from you know the Lego leagues and, and first from, robotics. From New Valley Intermediate School. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I'm sure they were part of it. And it was a big revolution in Hawaii. We're going to push robotics and it, and it seems to really work. I mean, you put that kind of emphasis on a program, it really works. Students get excited and jazzed up about it. But always remember, take a lot of courses. Mm -hmm. You can't, you know, if you have elective credit and you have time, think about that because it's really, really important to your career. It's always going to help you. And I'm talking about physics. I mean, the physics of how this thing works is fantastic. The engineering that goes into it. The chemistry, right? Um, you mentioned material science. Super, super important. And, of course, you got to get up to the levels of calculus if you want to have a STEM degree. So um, you, you want to don't just take the minimum. You know, try to take that extra course if you can. But uh, if we decide to go in this direction, and I'm all for it, in terms of building up drone technology and drone um, academics related projects in the state, you know, I think it's a fantastic tool to teach kids and to get kids engaged and so on in STEM education. You know, there's two quick anecdotes come to mind. One was an advertisement that uh, one of the uh, professional societies ran several years ago. It showed an Indy 500 racer, it pulls into the pits and the guys jump all over it and change parts and the thing goes out again and all this high tech stuff and really cool looking uniforms and all. And the thing said, this is great. You want to be a part of this? Go get yourself a PhD in engineering because no one touches this car or the tools or the pit without a PhD in engineering. Oh, I didn't think about that. So it's a good motivation. Well, the cool but thing about this though is it, it isn't going to, I mean, there's technician jobs all over the place. You mentioned the community colleges. You know, we have a lot of programs. I'm sure drone piloting is probably not going to require a PhD. We're right? going to but take our first break here. Let's, oh, let's talk about how we're going to build this whole program yeah. up in drones like you did in, in robotics when we get back from our break. Hello, ha, huh? how you doing? It's me, Angus McTech, wishing you to welcome and join us to see us on Hibachi Talk on Think Tech Hawaii. Join my co-hosts, Gordo the Tech Czar and Andrew the Security Guy every Friday from 1300 to 1345. We look forward to seeing you. We'll talk tech and we'll have some wee bit of fun. And remember, let your wing gang free wherever you be. Aloha! Aloha, I'm Carl Campagna, host of Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers. I hope you join us over the next several weeks as we take a deep dive into biofuels in Hawaii and explore the alternative fuels supply chain necessary for the local and global transition towards transportation fuel sustainability. Join us as we have good conversations with our farmers, our producers, our conversion technologies, our investors, and our legislators as we try to achieve our transportation sustainability goals. See you soon. She's on. 
We are back, folks, live here in Honolulu and on Lanai. Uh, Ted Ralston here with our incredible group of people from the west to the east. We have George Purdy standing by in Lanai City, and the sun hasn't set yet in Lanai City. It's nice. And at the table here, we have Katrina Kao. Cool. Cool. We have uh, Dr. John Rand, and we have Sean Tajima, uh, two from um, New Valley Middle School, uh, uh, principal and principal and pr principal winner of the science fair heading off uh, to the regional championships regional finals next week next saturday at um uh, Kapi'olani Community, Community college and dr john rand from uh who is attempting to both manage and also uh unmanage this entire evolving world of uh, of, of drones as a subset of robotics so we're talking john at during the break about what whatever however the, how do the how did the expansion, the promulgation, and the, the value extraction out of robotics work? How can we look at that as a model for how this broader version here, uh, drones, might follow in terms yeah. of the schools and such? I think that there's a lot of opportunities for students to really get engaged when they begin to work with this kind of material in, in classes and stuff. I mean, it's just a, a way to get everybody really, really excited about things. And um, I think that happened through our big emphasis with the robotics programs that were that took place all the way from middle school to graduate school at the university. And it became a really important uh, kind of an initiative that we could rally around and we're now seeing some of these students that started off in FIRST Robotics and so on. They're coming to the University of Hawaii. We had a huge increase in the number of mechanical engineers that came, specifically mechanical engineers, which, which, which told us it was probably robotics. I mean, it wasn't just a, a bump, a blip in so the data. So you can see this track. You can we see can this actually progression. track these students, and we can see, especially the transfer students that are coming from our community colleges, it was much larger in the field of mechanical engineers. So we're going to track Katrina for the next eight years, right? Absolutely. Until she so college. we okay. have you recorded. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, Starting right here. But it's right. real key that these students, you know, they get themselves prepared so that they have all, all the opportunities that they want, you know, because the more more math and science that you take in the K-12, the much better you're going to be and the more you're going to be able to do this kind of fun. And in that regard to robotics, was there, say, a, several fundamental principles or several major themes that distinguished that approach to robotics from, say, how we deal with physics or math or chemistry? Was there some formative structured thought that, that drove that forward? Yeah, I think we weren't as intentional back then. I mean, it was a great opportunity. That was only 10 years ago, John. And, well, you know, we, we, we've been learning how to do this right. You know, I think, I think um, we didn't align the curriculum as well as we might have. You know, we, we didn't do that kind of faculty development so that some of our high school teachers and middle school teachers had a lot of experience with robotics, but we got mentors from the field to come in and, and support the schools, and, and we did it sort of that way. I think that, you know, students love this kind of stuff, you know, uh, having an opportunity to really engage in what they're doing. And I think we need to expand that and get a lot more faculty development potentially for our K-12 uh, faculty so that they can they can be the ones that that mentor their students directly and have a really rich experience with their students rather than trying to I mean we still got to do that right we got to have guys like you and, and our friend over on uh, Lanai who know this stuff you know really know it to be able to help us but I think I think that we need to merge that or blend this kind of technology and research with the education piece. So. Okay. Well, you know, we can get some of that from some of the work George has been doing with the public safety people on Lanai. They ran a, uh, a simulated aircraft accident issue at Lanai Airport, right at the airport with the FAA part of it, and ran drones as part of the uh, recovery space identification. So coming from that alone is a way to pictorialize how first responders think and how their thinking can be enhanced by this sort of thing. So we could work maybe this year and kind of come up with these themes that, that, that drones or extending from robotics would uh, capitalize on. One that I find really interesting is these are complicated systems. We got a, this unit here, we got the ground controller or maybe some future version that Katrina's going to design for us that's better than these. We've got radio communication in between them. We've got video down. This is a really complicated situ situation. We've got the atmosphere in the middle of it. We've got GPS satellites feeding information to it. This is, we need to model these things in a scientifically sound modeling method. Sure. Not just one, but 500, 5,000 over Honolulu, 500 over Lanai. And how does this whole thing, how does this whole system behave and be reliable and be safe? 
That's one more thing on the list, Katrina, for you okay. to think about mass modeling <laughs> of these really complex subjects. Or take, a, take those props off of there. Give the kids a piece of balsa wood and say, make me a prop for that. Just a replacement prop. And you have to learn about pitch and the way the force is generated when that prop moves. You need to know how fast it's going to spin, right? Because mm -hmm. that's going to generate a different amount of force. And those kind of principles are absolutely vital to a physics course, for example. But, I mean, the fun part is to actually whittle it down and actually get a piece of balsa and, and make that pitch properly and maybe use, test it against the real drone and see if you get the same lift capacity with the student's props versus... So you, great, just, take, great you just introduced the stress to the system. You said, yeah. instead of taking a prop out of a box that somebody else made, figure it out yourself. And right. then what are the, and then figure it and out the better. That's cool. Right. Are you feeling a lot of pressure here? <laughs> For your, yeah, you and your peers at George's Kids on Lanai? Yeah. Okay. But it's also kind of fun to um, build stuff. Okay, we can't forget the fun part, can we? Yeah. Okay. And that means bringing you know, in your family. That means bringing mm -hmm. in the community. Yeah. Another one yeah. would be uh, collecting all the plastic trash that's in the ocean, reverse engineering all of that, and building airframes and props out of that. <laughs> this guy is cool brilliant. Floating around. Hey, George, you only get three bright ideas per show. That's two already. You almost <laughs> fall, brother. <laughs> okay. So, uh, but that's perfect. George is... Uh, is well known in, across the country through a lot of these TV shows and other things is trips to Alaska and such and they're picking his brain left and right for how to make these things move forward in exactly that domain. Take something that's a problem today and make it better. So uh, that's where the schools can come in on Oahu as well. Mm -hmm. We could... Uh, yeah, I think... Over like, to you. You know, yeah. <laughs> Katrina's a model student as a, as a STEM student for us and she's taking up the opportunities we've provided. As I said, she's our science fair winner and she's also she was also on our school and, robotics team yeah. that went to the state tournament and this weekend she's going to be competing with our math team at the math competition so she's a very well-rounded uh, stem student with a, a, a bright future and i'm hoping she continues to succeed as um i had the unique opportunity to travel for the international science and engineering fair for the past two years so we took the winners from Hawaii oh, uh, to the mainland. So last year we went to Arizona, the year before it was in Pittsburgh, and there was about 60 countries present with about 2,000 projects. So the best and brightest of the world. And I'm proud to say that last year we had our highest rank ever, a student from Roosevelt uh, is trying to find a cure for Alzheimer's, and he placed, I would say, in the top five out of about 2,000 projects. Wow. That, so we should not be not be at all uh, hesitant about putting real serious problems on the table in front of these kids. I don't want to be, be differential in calling you a kid. I'm sorry about it's that. Okay. It's, it's just okay. an age thing. You yeah. know? But anyway, these young people who are moving forward fast and are going to solve tomorrow's problems. Exactly. They're able, they're able to think very globally. And I've, mm -hmm. I, it never ceases to amaze me on the level of projects that they've done. Uh, like, you know, Katrina's as an eighth grader, what she created is, is remarkable. And Thank you. moving on to the, the science fair, you know, unless she's going to be one someday to create something great that's going to solve a big problem in the world. Okay, I just want her on my team. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We, we want her all on our team. Yeah. yeah. So we the other part as a parent also, you know, if we can get UH, the university, to put pressure on the DOE to uh, connect that link, there's a missing gap that, you know, a lot of our DOE students, even for the principal here, you know, he, sometimes he feels uh, hogtied. You know, we've done all our after-school programs and after school, not even during school. They learn more in two hours than they do all day sometimes. So that's what I want to change, and that's what I'm working hard. UH, put pressure on DOE to start getting these things, you know. Katrina, perfect example, you know. What if we had a whole school, like our school is 500, what if we had 500 kids just like Katrina? What a golden opportunity and the folks that we have in Hawaii that the rest of the world would want. Oh, there you go. You know, that, that George makes another good point without saying it, and that's it. We've, in this show, we've had like 100 ep episodes. We talk about these things and look at the problems and look at the future. We kind of decided that for this year, we're going to make community involvement and educational involvement the theme of this basic discussion to the extent we can. And we've got a bill that's uh, the Senate bill and a House bill in um, the ledge that is asking for some funding to generate uh, uh, 
uh, field experiences, field exercises, taking real problems and solving them with real systems. And in agriculture, in uh, public safety, public health, environment, beach erosion, uh, atmospheric issues, uh, uh, ocean safety, and uh, fire and volcanic uh, issues, every dimension we can think of where there's a value proposition potential, let's create it by a field exercise with everybody involved, the community involved. So the community votes, and that includes the schools and the kids and the parents. It votes on what is most useful, and now we get a community involvement and also a probably some really good ideas on how things might want to go forward. If we don't do that kind of active involvement and penetrate out in the community and find what works and what doesn't work, we'll probably have a little bit off on our theme. But if we can do that and get that kind of involvement, just like you're doing on Saturday, uh, we can get the target zeroed in a bit tighter and, and go forward. Yep. And the community involvement with schools and what you folks are doing will actually put the community in a better place when they talk to their legislature to write good bills that help support to grow an industry, you know, put the right rules out there and not us beating, you know, the old folks that have the chain on the brain. That's what I'm calling it. <laughs> okay. Boy, we heard four from you, George, this time, and not just three. So you're over your limit on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm squeezing it in there. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Okay. Well, uh, we wish you the best of luck in the continuation of your eighth grade career, which Thank will you. have the state finals coming up in, what, April, I think, right? March? I think it's in April. April, April right, in, at the convention center. Yes. We'll go down there and be part of that and, and cheer you on. Thank you. And, uh, uh, Sean, for uh, you for coming here and talking about the school program and, and maybe you can generate a hookup of an eye and talk about how that goes forward. Yes, Sean. And, and we love I to like to your great okay. principal. <laughs> yeah. We need to You're do a new principal I want. Thank you. Thank you. I love to work and with you. And we want to invite all of you to the regional science fair, a science and engineering fair that's going to be at Capulani Community College on the 11th. Yeah, of yeah let's tell the Saturday. public about that. The yeah. 11th, Saturday. From right, right. Because I was asked originally by the group to, to go and talk uh, to um, you know the the group and, and and the students in the afternoon I think and so that's kind of how we got a a, kind of got hooked up I was looking there's a drone team at the University of Hawaii in the engineering college and and they are going to do some cool flying and so on I figured that you didn't want to hear me just drone on no pun intended <laughs> uh, so we actually invited the drone folks to come and, and I think it'll be an exciting program okay, and so it's open, uh, that open to everybody to have a look at that starts at uh, two o'clock. From two, two to three, we're going to be flying drones and doing yeah. drone simulations and all kinds of fun things and then, related uh, to drones. It's, it's, what time is the science fair itself? Science fair is in the morning. Okay. And they're going to, the students will be judged, and that's the tension time. And hopefully then, after lunchtime, it will be, it'll turn into a, a real neat exploratory, kind of have fun. And, okay. And hopefully a lot of good partnerships. So we'll see a lot of the public there on the 11th. And let me thank you all for coming on the show. We are, at this point, uh, out of time. But uh, we'll see you all next Friday on the show. And George and Lanai, thanks very much for joining us. John, thanks Katrina, thank you. and John, thanks so much.